Uh, good morning, everybody. Thalassemia is, I think you know already, is a disease that abnormal in the red cells and hemoglobin. And the red cell hemoglobin that produced by the stem cell in the bone marrow. And this stem cell produced the red cell, white cell in the plaque. So that's why the bone marrow transplant can kill, not kill, kill two main diseases that I'm going to talk. The one is thalassemia, which is abnormal to red cell. And the other one maybe, it, it can, not maybe, it's definitely kill the leukemia. Leukemia is blood cancer. You understand what I'm saying, right? So the topic of my talk today, the first one is thalassemia. It's a major one, it's a main one. And the other one is leukemia. Actually, leukemia, you need the bone marrow, bone marrow transplant. You need, uh, it's, it's some kind of priority, more than the thalassemia. The reason why, because thalassemia, the way how you treat, the patient can get the transfusion and chelation. And then some patients, if they prefer not to do the transplant, they still alive. But leukemia, someone who got cancer and who failed the treatment, then you need the bone marrow transplant. So that's why the bone marrow transplant is more important in leukemia than thalassemia. So the thalassemia, now let's get back to thalassemia first. Thalassemia, so to, who, who need the transplant? The thalassemia who need the transplant is thalassemia who need the blood transfusion every month. So if the leukemia who does not need the transfusion, we do not recommend for the transplant because it's not severe enough. You understand what I'm saying? So that's why the thalassemia who need the transplant is the thalassemia who require the blood every month. So what type of thalassemia who require who require the blood? The other the one thing we have to know is beta beta beta. Because thalassemia is a disease from the beta clotting gene. And then we call the beta thalassemia. So the one who is severe is with beta, beta. Homosecus beta. You understand? Homosecus is mean that uh, they transfer the beta carrier from father and beta carrier from mother. And then once the baby got beta, homosecus beta, this is severe. Usually, homosecus beta. This, the, all these kids have the symptom of anemia and deliver and spleen start around one to three years, the first three years of age, especially the first year of age. Usually beta zero, beta zero, or almost like beta, they start to have the symptom of anemia the first year of age. The second one who require the transplant is the beta E. You know beta E because most of these patients in Southeast Asia is beta E. E is abnormal hemoglobin in beta as well, but they call E. Usually beta E around 80% is severe. 20% is not severe. You understand? Beta E, homozygous beta, almost 100% is severe. But beta E, only around 80% is severe. How do we know it's severe? The patient anemia and require the blood every month, like homozygous pain. You understand? Explain. <laughs> oh, no, the third part. The third part is hemoglobin H. Usually, hemoglobin H do not. The, this these patients do not require the blood. Hemoglobin H, unless they have some kind of hemoglobin H special. Like uh, in this country, like in Mogubin H, Adana, in Mogubin H, something abnormal, other than like different from Mogubin H, uh, that's common. So I have seen the Mogubin H, some kind of severe, who develop anemia since the first month. So these three group of patients, all of beta zero, beta zero, require the blood transfusion who needs a bone growth transplant. 
Then the E, not all, only 80% require the blood transfusion, and this one need the bone marrow transplant. Hemoglobin H, not all, I would say around 3%, only 3 to 5% of hemoglobin H require the bone marrow transplant because this patient require the blood transfusion. So let's say 100% of beta major, 80% of beta E, and let's say 5% of hemoglobin H who require the blood transfusion. Beta carrier, nothing like you and me. I have, I'm beta carrier, yeah. But I don't have family, so that's why I cannot transfer the <laughs> So beta minor, or be, we, not, we don't call beta minor, we call the beta trait, do not require any treatment. Okay? okay? So once we identify the patient who require the bone marrow transplant, if all that patient are the one who need the blood transfusion and treatment. So that's why we start thinking to do the bone marrow transplant. Someone asked me that, how soon to do the bone marrow transplant? I said that, well, the sooner the better. Because if the patient have the blood transfusion and getting older, so this patient some kind of develop ion overload. And then this patient, I don't know, because in some country or in some city in Indonesia, they didn't give filter blood. The filter blood is very important. Because if you get the blood, the one who did not who didn't receive the filter blood. This blood is contaminated with the white cell. And that white cell from the blood donor come to the patient, induce antibody. And this antibody is bad because this antibody can have a problem in the future, have a bad outcome to, for the bone marrow transplant. So that's why the younger the better is being that this patient did not receive too much of blood. So that's why this patient did not expose to an antigen to develop antibody. You understand what I'm saying? Because if you say, because I have seen, I have transplant the patient who 20 something years old. You know, because some, some country, like I, I got transferred from patient from Laos, from Cambodia, and then they're even worse than your country because the, the blood banking in that country is not good at all. So that's why, but the good thing is because the, the patient from Laos and Cambodia can come to Thailand and get the transfer. So that's what I said. But if they stay in Laos and Cambodia, the blood donation in that country, is the quality is not good at all. So that's why they receive the blood who didn't have, the blood, the blood didn't get any uh, filter. So we need the filter one, okay? And then, the, that's why the younger the better. The, ba the baby didn't expose to many blood or something, okay? However, if you ask me, well, the older, the, the, the old patient, you can perform the transplant. Yes, right now you might have that can perform the transplant. But you have to prepare the patient very well. So let's say, if the patient come to me, like a, more than 10 years of age, like 15, 16, 17. I have to prepare that patient very well. The way how I prepare is mean that the patient need the filter blood. The patient need a good chelation. And then, and then, and then, so that's why, and then let's see that the patient keep hemoglobin above than 10 milliliter for at least one to two years. So that's, those patients who is some kind of adult, we call it adolescent and young adults. So that's why when, when the patient decides to do the transplant in adolescent and young adult, I would say, wait, 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 wait. We have to prepare the patient very well before we do the transplant. Okay, because sometimes they say, oh, I want to do it now. I said, no, you prepare them well. Okay. I would say prepare them well with transfusion. Even patients, some patients like transfer every two to three weeks, every two weeks to keep hemoglobin above all the time. And the blood has to be filled good. And then good chelations. Okay, this is the most important thing. Okay, 
What we decide to do the task that so how you gonna do? Find the donor. The donor came from what? Sibling. The first one is sibling. Sibling is mean uh, a brother or sister from the same father and mother. Because someone told me that oh we can use sibling from another mother. I mean that the father got two mothers or three mothers or four mothers. <laughs> we cannot do that. Has to be same father and same mother. You understand what I'm saying? Because HLA is different from the blood group. HLA is transmitted or transferred by the gene. Half of the HLA from father and half of HLA from mother is the same as thalassemia. Half from father and half from mother is the same thing. The Mendelian theory is the theory of genetics or something. So let's say that the first child you got thalassemia and you're willing to have a second baby. And fortunately, the second baby, you're not thalassemia. But the second baby can be thalassemia trait, no problem with that. Thalassemia trait can donate the stem cell, okay? And then if the second baby is thalassemia carrier, so we gonna check the HL. The way how we check the HL, we just draw the blood. We don't need to draw the bone marrow. Draw the blood and send to the lab the HRV lab. Actually, in your country, you have the HRV lab. I don't know, maybe they send out to Singapore or Malaysia or something. So you have to talk to your doctor. Like he did, he's here, or Dr. Lia, or Dr. Rudy, they know how to handle that. Send the HRV up. Okay. And if the patient, okay, you could luck. The second, and you got matched in the same sibling, other in sibling in the same family, HLA is matched. The chance of matching is only 25%. If match, we can do the transplant. And if you ask me, the related right now is good? Yeah, it's good because it's simple, it's easy. I would say the H, for me myself, the HLA match sibling is almost 100%. I never lost anybody at all from the match sibling. Okay. However, in the law, if you can find a match sibling, how are you gonna do? The second one we call that match unrelated. But the bad thing is because in your country you don't have any donor registry, and in Thailand we do have. But the cost of match unrelated, the, because we have to pay for the unrelated donor. But this one, it doesn't mean that you pay direct to the donor, but you have to pay the system. The, whatever is going to be expensive. So that's why I would say unrelated means the other people, not related to you, but they have the registry. What, how do you say the registry? So when the, the one who willing to donate the stem cell, they're going to draw the blood and then check the HRA and keep the computer. So if you want to have the, don uh, have the stem cell, you just send the HRA to that registry and then they're just landing the computer system and then, oh, we find one matching to your son or your daughter and then we call them to donate themselves. Okay, but uh, in Thailand we have a 200,000 and the chance of matching is 40%, but it's expensive for the foreigners. So the third one, the matching is from father or mother. In the past, we cannot perform the task that father or mother. Why? Because his HR is, is never been matched. The chance of matching is only 1%, 1 or 2% of matching. So, but right now we perform already um, in the past seven or eight years, in probably in the last semi around 90, 90 patients. And then the successful rate is 95%. It's the same thing of match related. However, however, the process is a little bit complicated because you have to deal with the HLA is not matching, it's half matching. It's going to be uh, some kind of complication. We have to be understood. It's not simple like a match related. And then if you ask me the match related and help know which one you pay more, I would say match and help know Because we have to break the barrier of the half match by use a lot of things. You understand? So that's why, but 
final outcome is the same. It means that almost 90 something percent of the chance of cure. However, the difficulty in hemlo is more difficulty than the okay. The third one, so if for the and you ask me that when my shy can be performed the task that I told you the younger the better. The younger the better. And how young? Well, how we one or two years we can do that. No problem. Yeah, one, two years, two years old is fine. The younger, the better. And then the older, it's gonna be a lot of complicated. That's what we call some immunization, antibody or something. And the older is more expensive because it's big. And then you have to the cost of treatment is more because the drug and everything is you're gonna be because it's it's under the weight. So it's follow the weight. Uh, if heavier, we have to use more drug. So that's why the cost of treatment in the older is going to be more expensive. So that's why I said the younger the better. And then even though you've got the same result, the older or the younger, but the older, frankly speaking, is going to be a, a little bit more complicated, more complications or something. Why? Because you can trace back that genetic, that HLA form, because when you perform the HLA for the Simply on the help of people from all the whole So that's why you can trust that. So that's why we say that the lowest solution is cheaper, you can do the lowest solution. But for the unrelated, definitely you need the highest solution. So right now I changed from high to low from 5% to 80%. So it doesn't matter. But at least it has to be, we have to draw the love from the left side. Like especially from patient, sibling, and father and mother. Okay, the one we call the potential donor. So we just because you can save save money for that. Yeah, because I'm gonna use it anyway. So what is the change? It doesn't matter. Because some of the some of the parents they come and say, oh why you change from higher solution to lower solution? They said, well, because you can trace back which one from which one to the whole family. You don't need to pay. But I want to pay up to you, you wanna pay more? <laughs> But I told you already, you don't need to pay. Because, well, why, because why you do that? Dr. Sulte, we could do the past, we do the highest solution. Because I'm, I'm, I'm enlightened already to save the money. But you want to do, okay, fine. But I try to save your money. So family speaking, yeah. if something save your money, I save that. This one you can save. Yeah. 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 The question. Oh, okay, okay. So once I forgot, once you find a donor already, so right now I try because the thalassemia and the leukemia is different. Because the leukemia, if you come to me and then we want to do the leukemia, you can do the transplant right away. Because leukemia is emergency. Because if you don't do the transplant, the leukemia will be bad. So, so that's why the leukemia patient, I want to perform the transplant as soon as possible. Okay. For the thalassemia, you can, well, if you said you're not ready, okay, you can delay the problem yeah, because you can't transfer your accumulation. And then once we find a potential donor already, so we are going to do the first one, the patient has to be prepared very well. The patient has to check up all the whole body, like the heart, the echo, the lung, deep, the patient holding up, you can do, you have to do the lung function test, okay. The patient has to be not in the seri not not in the uh, serious condition, like oh the patient is being choked or something, or, whatever. or even infection. If the patient is still on bad infection, like oh you got something, you have to clean up the infection first. You understand what I'm saying? So that's why, and then this infection it depends on me myself. That well, if I said. Some kind of infection, maybe subside already, okay, we go ahead. What kind of infection? Like, uh, we usually we just check the fungal infection because in leukemia patient, they have been treated with the chemotherapy. The patient might have some kind of occult fungal, fungus, uh, lung, or TB. So that's why at least I'm going to do a chest x ray 
X-ray, chest X-ray, and to screen it that the patient doesn't have any infection. Okay, and then after that, if you're ready for the leukemia or thalassemia, we go ahead and do the transplant. However, thalassemia, we, I have a new protocol, different from the leukemia, because usually leukemia, I kind of uh, do go ahead and do the transplant because the leukemia, the patient already receive the chemo for quite a long time. I mean the bone marrow or whatever has been suppressed. <coughs> so the leukemia is easy to get rid of the bad cells, you understand? But thalassemia, even though it's not cancer, but thalassemia, the bone marrow is very, 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 very active. When you draw the bone marrow from thalassemia, you will see a lot of cells. Leukemia has been damaged by the chemo. So the stem cell of the leukemia patient is very low. When you draw the bone marrow, sometimes it's very low. But thalassemia is never been, never been exposed to any chemotherapy. So it's going to be active. So why in Italy, why in several countries they have a problem of rejection? It's been not success. Because when you do the transplant in thalassemia, <coughs> the disease will be bad. Because they didn't prepare the patient very well. For me, myself, in thalassemia, I have a new protocol because published already. And right now, a lot of centers follow our idea. It means that the patient has to be given chemotherapy, two cycles. And this chemotherapy is fudalabi and dexamethasone. It's very soft chemo, okay? And then, this is not toxic. And then the, the chemo is what? This one is two months before the transplant, one month before the transplant. Then two cycles, and then after that, the patient come to the hospital, okay, for the transplant. Let's say, if the transplant is next two months, right, right now, the, the patient will get the chemo, the soft, five days, and then one, and then wait for another month, get the chemo, another five days. This chemo is very soft, never have any toxicity at all. And then the third month come to the unit, we do the transplant. And then before the transplant, the patient gonna do the patient gonna have the surgery, put the heat mat, and then she's the one that handle the heat mat catheter care. The patient has to stick with the heat mat for at least for one year or six months, at least six months to one year. The patient cannot take a bath, just only whatever uh, clean by the towel or whatever. No, that you cannot take the shower. Because this one is some kind of human character that is going to be stick out, uh, going to be out of the body, is like this. So they doesn't have that, we call it human character. And so the surgery has been performed, and then one performed already, the patient comes to you. The patient will receive the chemotherapy for at least two weeks. This chemotherapy is going to be heavy. So that's why the patient has to be in the sterile room cannot go out, but we will allow the parents to stay in the room. But one parent at one time. And then the chemo for two weeks, and then the donor is going to be ready after the chemo two weeks. The donor will put the lie as well to mobilize the stem cell out of the lie. The lie is going to put the catheter to the donor. The catheter is going to be around here. Okay, we're going to we're gonna draw the blood from the donor to the machine, and the machine will select the stem cell and return the platelet and then red cell and everything to the donor. The donor just uh, uh, donate only the white cells and then a little bit of red cell, a little bit of platelet, a little bit of everything, everything just only the stem cell. And then usually the volume is around one to two hundred, and then that one will give to Okay, so this is it. And once the patient receives the stem cell, the patient, we are going to wait until the marrow, the stem cell, get into the bone marrow of the patient and then engraft. It means engraft means the donor cells come back. And the donor cell is been like a uh, uh, engraft, it means it's got stick into the bone marrow and produce a new cell. And then it takes for around two to three weeks. 
then produce the new red cells. And then we can check that that stem cell is uh, that stem cell from the donor into the patient. We can check by the genetic testing whether or not the genetic of the blood cells it changed from the patient to the donor. Okay, and then that's it. However, the patient has to uh, once the patient the white count is up, we will let the patient out of the unit. But we have to follow with us. After this child from the unit, at the beginning like uh, every week for one month, and then after that every two weeks, every three weeks, and if you are okay, we will let you go back to Indonesia and come back to see me every two to three months. And then usually the patient uh, for the, the soft chemo, when you get the chemo, you go back to Indonesia and then come back soft chemo for five days, you go back to Indonesia and then for the task that uh, including the chemo, the stem cells and engraving, your patient has hospitalized in the hospital, it takes probably around two months. And then after that, you're gonna stay in Bangkok another two to three months. If nothing happened, you will come to Indonesia to see your, your local doctor. Because I right now I have contact your local doctor already. So that's why we can talk to your local doctors. We have to be careful about the infections. Because even though you get the white count, up, but you still have the other cells growing more. You can easily to get infection. So that's why when you go out from the unit, be careful. This is, I would, I would say this is almost a year. Whenever you get sick, don't let them come to close to your baby or to your baby, to your son or your daughter. Or even you yourself, when you feel sick, go away. Let someone take care of your baby. And then I would recommend that before the tax event, all of you must have been vaccinated, especially the influenza shot or whatever. You have to be like, well, you're okay. Whoever, not you or you or your other baby, grandma, grandpa, whatever, who take care of the baby, you have to be careful. Or even you are your mate or something, or you are, you are, uh, uh, whoever take care of the cat, the cat keeper has to be, whenever they get sick, just go away. And you don't bring the baby to some kind of crowded area, especially like, uh, you know, uh, you see that oh, this is crowded, crowded <coughs> area, because it's easy to get Or when you go to visit to the clinic, you just get away from the sick baby. You have to go because because the baby, your, your son or daughter is easy to catch up the infection, especially, you know, when someone, I mean, uh, I mean uh, sneezing or coughing and then can, and then can, can, can uh, spread out the germs or something. You understand And someone who want to touch your baby have to wash their hand. Okay, this is some kind of, let's do it as a routine practice. Okay? And then the food. Because some things I have a lot of questions. Can we eat that? Can we eat that? Just use your common sense. You think that this food is not clean, don't you? <coughs> Even it's clean already, but you just stay on the table for the whole day and then you bring it back, don't do that. So the food has to be well cooked. And then you cook already, just eat. And then, you know what I mean? Okay? And if you want to some kind of, uh, to do some food, and food you just freeze it, but I usually I don't I don't do that the frozen food or something. You just prepare and then and then it has to be clean and then you warm it. But but let's let's say that you don't want a food that can stay for at least for that six hours. That's not good. You understand what I'm saying? Because that's why the food has to be well cooked and warm and eat right away. Okay? And then no raw food. Someone said, oh, it's so cheap, no. Or the straight food. I like it. the straight food. Is, because they say, oh, it's, it's very good food. It's, you know, grilled, but it's straight food. And then you don't know the straight food is not, it's not I mean, the hygienic food or not. It's clean or not. I don't know. Okay? So that's the most important. 
And in the first three months, I, I would say I don't allow the patient to have some kind of dairy product. You can have milk, milk in powder, and then you prepare with the hot water as well. But the, you know dairy product, like the fresh milk that we sit in the refrigerator of the, of the, of the grocery store, or no, we, we, we don't allow people to have the dairy food, or the cheese or something. Or in fruit, the first three months, you cannot have the fresh fruit or fresh salad. You cannot. Okay? The first four three months. And then after that, whatever, you can enjoy the food. But you have to be careful, the food has to be well cooked, hot, and then we eat by the way. Because someone said, oh, we can cook and then eat tomorrow, and then we can go out. No, don't do that. It's just every day by the way. The BFT success, I never told anybody 100%. No. If someone told you all kind of treatment 100%, that's wrong. It's never be happening in Thailand. Even though you go to cosmetic and then you see the anti aging it's not gonna say 100%. Okay? So right now I say that in my hand, you say that probably about 90 something percent. And I would say that the younger, Let's say less than 10 years of age is almost 100%. But the older, probably around 90 something, roughly around 90 something, 95-96%. However, you have to be aware that the chance you can lose the baby or whatever, it can be 5% or 10%. It depends on the good hands of the transplant or not. So I say, say I, nev I, I never say it's 100%. But I would say that, well, if the younger than 10 years of age, yes, maybe almost 100. And if older, probably around 90 something. However, before when a success, I would say success, what does it mean? The first success is in crafting. Uh, you will see, you will, I can tell you, after the stem cell infusion, it takes for two or three weeks, and once the cell is up, we check the genetic testing, whether or not belongs to the donor, or the ones belong to the donor at the beginning, around, at the, at the first checking, uh, you success the first one. However, once you've got genetic, all, the, all your uh, stem cells in the body of the patients belong to the donor, you said, but you have to follow another at least three to six months, because during that time you can have a little, you can have complication, infection, Gravis disease and platelet is the, probably around six months. You can tell that success. What I mean, that success I never said. We can taper off the all kind of medicines and no medicine at all. That's what I said is successful. Okay, and it takes time. It takes around three months, six months, <coughs> nine months, or a year. And some patient has been on the medicine for at least two or three years and you can stop. Even though you're on the medicine two or three years, the patient still live like a normal life. The patient sometimes have immunological, pro immunological some kind of, uh, we call the GVHD, and then it takes for two to three years to get resolved, you understand? And then, so that's why I have to be, I have, I have to tell you that you need to be patient. Because when I see some patients, they say, oh, well, no, 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 you have to be patient. That's all I can say. Another thing is, you have to come to follow with me. Because the, the, all, most of the patients, they say, when you go back to Indonesia, Bangladesh, Pakistan, they're gone. And then they say, they never come back. And then once, in the, once one, one day, they come to see me, oh, my child is getting worse. I say, because that's a problem. The follow-up is going to be very important. So you have to come to see me. If I see something wrong, I can, I can do some kind of uh, treatment right away and then it's good to so. The Indonesian patient is good. You are very good because you listen to me and then you come. One other thing, I, you know, I, I don't want to say, but I have to say like a Pakistan. That's, <laughs> I have a problem. Because they never come. They just rely on the local doctor. And even local doctor didn't communicate with me. Because here, the Yolo call doctor 
I mean, give me a call, whatever, what to do is good. But the, the local doctor in some of the country, they, they want to do their own way, like in Pakistan, or Bangladesh, or even in the East. That's even worse than the East. Because they don't communicate with all, they want to do their own way. So that's because when you go back, you have to go back to your local doctor and let your local doctor communicate with me. So that's the more thing. So once you get something wrong in your when you go back, so that's why I can talk to your local doctor and then you can take it. And if some if something is not good, you can fly or anything to see. Okay? Because you 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 treat already, so so this is the most important. Communication, communication, communication. You understand? And then when I saw that, please come back, said please come back. I came here to Indonesia. I don't want to take the patient and do the dance with Okay. But I want to come and train your doctor to take care of you. That's the most important thing. So in the future, maybe your doctor can move from the transfer in your country. That's my idea. Okay? Remember. Because I don't want to come and do it then don't. Because I want to teach your doctor. Because I'm the doctor. I'm not investor. I'm not the merchant. I'm the doctor. But it depends on your local doctor want to learn or not. That's the most important. You have to encourage your doctor. Okay? And then you have to empower yourself. Talk to your government. Because if you came by yourself and then you didn't voice your government, that's the most important thing. I think that you have to work with your local doctor and send the voice to the government. That's what you need. Because sometimes your local doctor they cannot do anything because a lot of politics. So the politics gonna be run by you yourself. Your country is belongs to you. It's not belong to your president. <laughs> Remember, it's the same thing in Thailand. My country is belongs to ours, not belong to someone. You have to voice. This is democracy. Okay, I'm not politician. <laughs> You voice your, your, you voice, send the voice, and then you have to support your doctor. And then once you support your doctor, and then you send the voice to the president what you need. I can come here and then teach you and then how to do that. Don't worry about that. But you have to send a signal to your doc, to your local, to your government that what you need. You send the letter or whatever and then what you need. And the way how you send the letter, because well, if you do this, I support you. Tell your politician. If you do this, I support you. If you do this, I support you. That's democracy. Okay? Voice to 